Hello, Titus. Hello, Hadrian. Well, as my uh, court architect, uh, I'm happy to uh, accompany you on this tour of my virtual villa. We've just gotten a new build back from our partners at the Idea Lab at Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana. And it has a lot of new features which we want to look at together today to make sure everything is uh, has been done properly and we can add any problems we see to our punch list. They're so responsive and good about fixing things and we're going to spend all summer uh, in 2012 making improvements. So why don't we take a look where, uh, at, at what they've given us. So uh, where are we right now? Right now we're standing in the forecourt to the antenna way on. Uh, where there's an obelisk and two symmetrical temples and beyond it is the semicircular Antinouan temple. Right, um, and could we take a look at the paradata that is associated with this part of the site? And for anybody who's uh, watching us, paradata is a concept that is incorporated in the London Charter, and the London Charter gives us guidelines for how to create scientifically valid 3D computer reconstructions of cultural heritage artifacts and monuments. And Paradata is essential because it is all the modeling information that a 3D modeler uh, assembles while working with a scholarly team to make a reconstruction. And I know that you have uh, provided the Paradata for the entire villa and it's been divided up site by site and put onto the project website. Mm -hmm. And I just went to the project website by clicking the website button in the virtual world and now we're looking at the paradata for the antenna web. Great, and I'm doing that on my end. So here we have how the model was built, um, what resources we used, plans, sections, um, and, and, and as how I it's textured. Mm -hmm. and, and as I recall, uh, the excavator, if you go to the very end of the Paradata, you see bibliography. There are two items by Zachary Amari. He is the excavator and works for the Archaeological Superintendency of Lazio, which is administratively responsible for the site. He worked uh, with us very closely and is I think it's fair to say that our intent here is to reflect his interpretation of the archaeological data as closely as possible. Uh, would you agree? Yes, exactly. And uh, so he, uh, just to think back on it, he, over the s summer, I think it was especially last summer, uh, vetted your work and uh, you went through a number of versions until he was happy and signed off on it. Yep. and. Uh, those iterations and versions are noted in the paradata where it's applicable. Uh, and I also included um, his notes that he sent to you via email. Uh, so his, his notes specifically about the, the model itself. Okay, so when you, let's go back to, to the world then again, the virtual world, and just take a quick look and see whether what we've gotten here from Ball State Accurate ref accurately reflects what you gave them because there is a process of translation from what you created uh, our, the virtual world in which is 3D Studio Max and then what they have to do to put this into Unity 3D the virtual world game engine and, and to do that they translate everything into another program called Maya and in that translation of course there's always a possibility for things to be lost or er errors to be made that we need to uh, check out and correct. I mean, as I look at it, it looks pretty good to me. Yeah, every, everything here so far is, is pretty good. The temples and everything were textured and built according to how we specified. Um, the landscape design was done with um, Lizzie Macaulay Lewis. Yep. Um, That's great. She's, she's been very helpful all, and very responsive all along. So let's go forward and uh, beyond the obelisk, as you can see, I'm moving forward to 
maybe show our, our viewers a couple things here. We can talk about the uh, solar tracking feature and we can also show that every item that, that still exists in the real world and that we think came from this site, we have documented again using the project website. So if you go to the website you could for example um, show our viewers what we know about these two telemones that are holding up the roof of the porch of the sanctuary of Antinous and also what we know about the statue that we can see inside the cella or the sanctuary proper of this structure at the end of the main axis of the Antinouea. Mm -hmm. uh, another nice uh, feature of our Unity application is that we have this solar tracker that allows us to set the date for any day of the year 130 AD, which is when the villa was at its sort of peak of use and development. And we can set the hour of the day for any hour uh, of that day that we have chosen. And one of the reasons, of course, is just to make the villa look more realistic at the different times of day. So if we have a morning salutatio, we can set the sun at, you know, 10 a.m. and it'll, it'll look right. If we have a banquet in the evening, we can set it for 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and it'll look right for that. But another reason is that we're starting to uh, learn from scholars, uh, some of whom we're, all, we're actually collaborating with, um, that there are alignments between some of the features at the villa or other Hadrianic buildings like the Pantheon in Rome and celestial features like the sun and the moon and the planets which, which had astrological significance and were known to the Romans. Right now we have the solar tracker which allows us to see such alignments between the sun and the built features. And we just discovered um, at the Antinouéon a couple weeks ago a, a new feature that had never been suspected by anyone and that's because they didn't have this model and they didn't have the solar tracking uh, affordance to look for new alignments and we did find an alignment. Uh, you, you remember, can you tell us about that Matt? The alignment happens uh, at sunrise on July 20th right. when, when the sun is rising it, the obelisk casts a shadow directly online with the statue of Antinous in the rear niche of the Antinouéon. And the sun illuminates on both sides of the statue while the obelisk shadow blocks out the statue itself. Yeah, and that was really interesting because all the other alignments we've found were deduced by archaeoastronomers looking at the plan of the villa and noticing things like uh, an axis of a place like the Rocca Bruna or the Academia was 26 degrees off the cardinal points and knowing that at this latitude, 26 degrees off indicates an alignment for the winter and summer solstices. So that was a deduction. In this case, uh, we don't have an alignment like that that allowed a deduction to be made by an astronomer. Instead, it was made inductively, that is experimental, experimentally, not to say randomly, by the people at Ball State when they finished making this. They just ran the solar feature and they saw an alignment. They reported it to me. It was July 20th at sunrise. I checked with our Roman calendar expert and our Egyptian calendar expert and uh, found out that that was a very significant date on the Egyptian calendar in the 130s AD. It was New Year's Day. And Antinous is shown uh, here. We can go closer and take a look as Osiris, and Osiris is the god of the underworld in, the, uh, in Egyptian religion who brings salvation to people by always coming back as the sun does. It comes back on a daily basis and then of course in a more major way with the new year it comes back and renews itself. And this renewal in this world is symbolic for the Egyptians of renewal and, and survival of the soul in the afterlife. So what more significant and appropriate an alignment could there be then between this statue and the obelisk, which symbolizes for the Egyptians and the Romans a sunbeam, by the way, 
and the rising sun on sunrise New Year's Day. It's just spectacular, and it was a discovery only possible because we had this solar tracking device and we had the 3D model. So we think that there are probably many more such, uh, such alignments to be found, and we're looking forward to, to turning this uh, over to our students and setting them loose in it so they can <clears throat> explore it and find more such alignments in the future. Yeah, I always find that a just an awesome experience to see that alignment. Let me let's go over to the vestibule. I'll follow you. And uh, let me follow you, Titus, down toward the vestibule. And we can walk a little way uh, together. We have beautiful plantings that Lizzie advised us to put in. And. Uh, I've gotten. I'm getting ahead of you, Slowpoke. <laughs> I guess we must have visitors who have left their horses here. How nice. Wonder who's there. Well, we'll find out in a second. Whoops. We'll try not to walk into the hedge. Go up the stairs and. Ooh, this is a splendid space. Uh, really nice. So here we are in the vestibule, and uh, I know you worked long and hard on this because very little of it survives, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the the footprint of the, the plan remains today. Well, there's a lot we could say about it, but we have a lot to show um, our, our viewers and to look at ourselves. Why don't we take advantage of the teleporting feature, which allows us to sort of jump from feature to feature in the villa and go over and see... Um, Oh, how about the Maritime Theater? That's something new in this build. Okay. I'll see you there. Hi. How are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe we better do our greeting again. <laughs> Great. So this is the Maritime Theater. Did they put the wooden drawbridges in? So if we walk around, we can see the, the drawbridges. I think they did. Yeah, there's a there's guards standing on them to keep to keep trespassers out. Oh, good. I, I do want to be safe on my island. There's the guard standing on the wooden drawbridge. Ah, oh, yeah. He won't let us pass. I'll give him the thumbs up. He's doing a good job. Okay, great. This looks good. Where do you suggest we teleport to next? How about the Piazza d'Oro? I'm eager to see that. It's one, of right. my fav one of my favorite parts. So now we'll use the map function to teleport to the Piazza d'Oro. Very nice. Oops, we have some gardeners working here. <laughs> nice Euripus with some jet d'eau playing. Mm-hmm. Right now we're standing in the colonnade that runs around the outside of the, the main courtyard of the Piazza d'Oro. And I know you worked long and hard on this, and this there's actually uh, more that survives than, say, at the vestibule. How about the floor we're looking at, that beautiful opus sectile pattern? Is that uh, known with certainty? This is from the Guida Baldi uh, opus sectile book, yes. where he has patterns for all the... Opus for most of the Opus Sectile floor, and this pattern is is from the colonnade of the Piazza d'Oro. Excellent. And uh, as I look at this colonnade, it's very deep, and so uh, I know Rakob's work on the Piazza d'Oro was a a great source of help for you. Uh, so this central, I was worried about this central uh, row of Cipollino columns, and, and that is uh, something that we know from Rockup's reconstruction that did belong here. Okay, so now we'll walk around the colonnade to the rear of the other hall of the Piazza d'Oro. Okay, let me follow you.
Well, look back at the entrance dome. Mm -hmm. It's gilded. That's quite nice. It's probably one reason why we call it the Piazza d'Oro. You s see it down there at the end of the main axis. Yeah, debate whether this was used as a library, as Marina de Franceschini, one of our advisors, says, or whether it was used as a mm -hmm. triclinium. Or possibly both. There's a debate of as to whether it was even roofed. Um, yeah, then there's that debate too. So a lot of debates here. It's all in all in the paradata. And uh, uh, anybody coming here who wonders what why they're seeing what they're seeing can just check the, check out the paradata and get the answers. To. And there you are. Hello. Hello. Oh, so we're in the big central hall. We come in mm -hmm. to. Right now we're in the central hall, the three Zedra. And we're uh, not we're not alone. Uh, take look take a look behind you. And there's some some other members of Hadrian's Are they friends of the Secret Service? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask Sabina about these ladies. They must be her, her friends. Um, so let's see. Go ahead and I'll follow you. So the three Xedra is is a main hall um, bordered on three sides by semicircular courtyards and yeah. on one H side. Hadrian loved to do that. We see that in the Hall of the Dork columns. We see it at the uh, at the main vestibule. Mm -hmm. These semicircular open air uh, spaces off of halls like this. And on one side there's a, a fountain, a um, large fountain. All right. And if we stand here and look out across this courtyard, we can see the Antinoeon off in the distance ah, yeah. through the colonnade beyond. Following you. Trying not to fall into the fountain. I didn't play game enough games as a youth. I spent, wasted too much time studying Greek and Latin. Mm -hmm. Whoops. So from here, from this uh, overlook, we can look back at where we were earlier, which is the Antinoan. Oh, great. And you can see the... Oh, there it is, yeah. Obelisk. Cool. Amazing. People haven't had this view for 1,800 years. <laughs> right now hey. we're standing in the colonnade that joins the Pichile to the vestibule. Oh, yeah, I'm looking back. And I uh, can see that. I wonder what the solar tracker would look like now if we run it uh, and, and keep our eyes on the and on the obelisk of the Antinoeon. Could be interesting. Okay, I'll set it for July 20th, and I'll run it right now. We love July 20th. Ooh. See that? So at sunrise, it looks like the sun illuminates the obelisk. So that's another view. Though. That's dramatic. That is really something. Wow. This has got to be a feature of the d the whole design. <laughs> yes, I'm seeing that too. Fantastic. Okay. Well. Thank you very much, Titus. Uh, I think that we can congratulate our colleagues at Ball State for uh, doing an excellent job uh, with this build. And we've got uh, a ways to go till we have everything in, in this villa model. But by uh, the time we re reassemble for classes in the fall semester of 2012, it should be uh, pretty much whipped into shape, don't you think? 